Good. Good morning, everybody. First of all, I want to thank Buzz and his whole group of people for putting this event together. This is great. I, I just, you know, uh, f fascinated the way how smooth it goes and how um, so respectful uh, all his people are to uh, help this thing get along. I want to thank you all very much for putting on this way to come. Let's give him a hand. Okay, my, my name is Bob Bethany, and I've been studying just as long as Buzz, 1964, and, and uh, I'm still running a dojo 57 years later in Hanson now. I know a couple people asked me, how's the Brockton school going? That was a big hall, and we all, had, we all went to Brockton to have uh, promotions and everything. That was a beautiful hall. But um, I moved to Hanson, I sold, sold the, uh, can you hear me, Jimmy? No. You can't hear me? I can't hear you. How about now? I love you. <laughs> Maloney son. So, I love Jimmy too. So, people, I want to do a Sun Chin warm up, okay? First beat Sun Chin. Slow. Stay with the count. Live in the moment, okay? Very slow. I'll kind of set the pace and um, I'm going to count. I want you to be very, very slow. You know, people, the only time that you have dominion over is right now. The only time you have control over is right now. Live in the moment, right now. You can't control the past, and you cannot control the future, but you can control right now. This dominion is the only part you control, so live in it a little longer in Sun Chin. All right? Slow. Slow. Sun Chin Kata. Yeah. Left knee. So chi you lucky. Whoosh. What day? Yep. Very nice, very nice. You know, when I was watching Sun Chen from the back and some of you people were doing your kata, I seen this, a blend, a very minute blend, but it shows me that you're not living in the moment. The blend was 
Watch my feet. And before this came back, you were already pivoting. Several people are doing that. You're rushing it, you're blending. Don't blend your kata. And if you stop here, then you won't be doing it in, in Saison and you look like a gerbil on speed. Okay, so one, two, three, then by itself, step. A lot of people doing this. As they bring it back, they're already pivoting. Don't blend your kata. Simple blend like that, and then he carried it on to say San and everything like that. So I want to reinforce what George and, and uh, Buzz was, was doing. Now, um, Jimmy, this is my student Jimmy. He's with his mother and his, and his sister, who have been training with me since they were children. So um, I'm going to do aggravators on chin, okay? So Mushin, accepting mind, right? Mushin is like uh, the monks, all these pillars there, and the student would walk through, and the monk would sneak out behind him and hit him with a katana, bam! And after a while, the kid would be walking through like this and looking for him, right? Of course, when he was looking this way, he came that way. It's not going to work. And then slowly but surely, the student realized, if I have to think he's there, and then he comes out of here, I've got to come off what I'm thinking and redirect it to where he's coming from. Never going to work, right? We all know that. Mushin, accepting mind. Just walk, and when it comes, bang. Right? George was talking about Sam Chin. Let it go. Now, when we do this, you're going to smile. Some of you people are smiling. Some of you people will be resisting. Let it happen. Okay? Accepting mind. So, we call it aggravated Sam Chin, and it goes like this. And you're going to pair up and do it. When we give him the point to Hajimin, he's going to do his Sam Chin. Go. People, life throws curves at you all the time. Let it go. It is poison if you linger on it. Let it go. When he throws that strike, just come back to Sun Chin. Now, some of you people, you're going to feel them resist. Or when you push, when they're in the way, you're going to push them out of the way, or you, you start to just let it go. And I would like you to at least take them out of Sun Chin, or to not, you know, don't eject them across the floor. But at least take him out of San Chin a couple times to see how he responds in life. Continue on your path. Don't let it disrupt you. Don't let it change you. There are no mistakes in life, only lessons to be learned. All right? So get a partner and do aggravated San Chin and then switch. See how it feels. No smiling. Take him out of his stance a couple times. Force him out of his stance. Be nice. No smiling. Eyes glaring. No smiling. Clear your mind. Mushin. <laughs> Mushin. When you finish, switch off.
It's a way of life. Martial arts is a way of life. Why do you think people stay with you for 40 and 50 years? I've got ninth degrees underneath me. Been with me 45 years. Why is that? A teacher goes to school and he has a child for a year and he makes an effect for the rest of his life. People remember the students that you're working with, they will remember you for the rest of your life. I hope that there will be a good memory, okay? We have students that have been with us for 45 years. I guess we're not just teaching them a kick and a punch, we're teaching them a way of life. Aggravated Sun Shin, move on. I've seen some of you smiling as on Mu Shin, but that's okay. I'd rather see that than uh, I've seen a couple of people when they push, you kind of resist. Half hard and half soft. Sometimes Wei Juru is too hard. It's almost most of the time, too hard. Remember, Puang Gei Nun, half hard and half soft. Yield. If a guy's got 275 pounds, I can't tell you how many times when we fought in the 60s, it was bare fisted and there was no weight classification. You fought because you was a black belt. You'd fight guys 100 pounds more than you. If you were trying to bang with those guys, you didn't win, you get hurt. You would yield, take the keys away before the engine started. Go when he goes, take the keys away before he turns it and the engine starts. Go when he goes. There's three ways of fighting. One, you back up to protect yourself. Two, you block, protect yourself, stand your ground and return. Three, the ultimate way of fighting, you know exactly when he's coming. And I'm gonna work on that tomorrow. Not only when he's coming, but what he's coming with. You're gonna read the seed, and before the seed or the thought gets to the hand or the foot, I'm going in because I know what he's gonna do. And I'm gonna work on that tomorrow to teach you how to read the seed. We're gonna live in the world that and do exercises in the world that would enlighten you so that when somebody attacks, it's, okay, here he comes, it's gonna be a right punch, what shall I do? And that's what your brain will be doing while he's accelerating to come after you. Read the seed, go when he goes. All animals fight that way. Mongoose and a snake, it's like this, the head's level, and then when one goes, the other one goes like this. Unless, and, and the Japanese, you know, over there, they, they cheated. They gave us a mongoose and a snake that fought before, and if the mongoose lost, he'd be going like this, because he already lost, but out there, he goes, the other one attacks at the same time, see who wins, right? That's the way, and, and I'm not saying that you can fight like that all the time. I'm saying it's a very effective way to fight. And um, I think uh, if you watch some of the videos in Okinawa and everything, you could see that that's kind of the things I was doing, especially the takedown. Miami didn't know it, but <laughs> I set him up about three techniques before I took him down. I knew exactly what he was doing, but I set him up to make sure that he was feeling his oats and go after that leg. So, um, aggravated Sun Chin, again, is a way of life too. So you, you kind of bring that in when you're talking to your students about just, just go with the flow, just let it happen and everything. And when you're sparring, it's the same thing. You got 250 pounds coming down on there. You're not gonna crash with that thing unless you can get in there before the motor starts. You're gonna yield, open up the door and hit them on the way by, things like that. And we'll talk about that. Right. Um, everybody give me a uh, right sound chin. Hands up. Double thrust. Draw back. Each. Knee. Right here. Your sun chin power does not come this way. Your sun chin power comes this way. Hey, Jenny, Brooke, how you doing? That's my daughter and my granddaughter. Three generations in the dojo comes this way. And that's why George and Buzz were so emphatic about this. You know when a, when a uh, person lifts weights, you guys lift weights, you pick it up and you go like this, boom. Now you can rest. Sun Chin, eh? If a firefighter has to carry somebody out in the fire, it's either this way or it's over his shoulder. Why? Sun Chin, natural strength, very strong, right here. So in the double strikes, I feel it more as I try to make my power come from here, turning it over here instead of early, like they were talking about. So what I want you to do, uh, Jimmy, I want you to get yourself in the right sanction. 
I want you to put your hands in some chin and make a fist. Now, I am going to go the opposite now. I am going to make him resist and I'm gonna put some pressure on him so he can work the other side of some chin. So he's in a sun chin, I'm gonna grab his arm there. I'm gonna hold his hand here and he's gonna form a sun chin strike. While he's going back, I'm gonna to push to force him to go back further, but he's not gonna let me. While he's coming out, I am gonna hold this technique, but not more than letting him be able to do it. And then about the last, we're gonna do five each arm. About the last one, then I am gonna force the issue really strong. And when he comes out, I'm gonna try to stop him from throwing it. While you're doing the first few, I want you to, when you get back here, as you're coming out, I want you to drop your elbow out and watch. It's gone, people. You're not gonna do a darn thing about going forward. So you can understand why the elbows are along the body. So as he's coming in the first couple times, just throw your elbow out and hold. Power's gone. And then bring it back in, just so you experience it. Wait until you get underneath it. Push, and then push again. I want five each arm, both students. Try it with your partner. Throw that elbow out just to show you a little bit of how the power is diminished when the elbow comes out. And the last few, try to hold them back, full tilt. Let them work their stomach muscles. Grab the floor with your toes or you will not activate your sun chin stance. Grab the floor with your toes or you will not activate your front sun chin legs. Make it stronger for pushing. Grab the floor with your toes. You'll feel so much more strength because you have activated the muscles in your leg. Hold on to the other hand while you're holding, pushing on the other one, just to balance his sun chin. Do not lean forward. Stay in sun chin. Just good workout for your arms. Notice how when you grab the floor with your toes, it activates the muscles in your kata, I mean your legs, and then all of a sudden you can stabilize instead of doing this, pushing. Right from here. If you're pushing, then you are doing this. If you're in some chin and it's coming from here, how can you push or lean forward? You see what I'm saying? So when you do this movement, if you're doing it, grab the floor with your toes, and if you see your student doing this, then he still is throwing his techniques like this. Because if it's coming from here, how can you lean forward when you're producing this, this type of energy? So stay in your sun chin and feel the power. And we all know that the obi is, obi is the reminder where all your power comes from, right? tie the belt for the first time, he explained to the student, he says, Obi? He says, you mean like Star Wars? And I said, yeah, Obi, the center of the universe, or the center of the Jedi. Little guys like to hear that, you know. Oh, wow, man, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a Jedi. <laughs> oh, ninja, ninja. Ninja kicked the turtle, anyways. Okay, so now we're gonna go through the half hard and half soft, Jimmy. And we're gonna do it through the forearms, all right? So give me a right sun chin and uh, left sun chin and uh, right sun chin. Lock onto your arms, okay? This is all you can make contact with right here. And I want you to push your partner out of his stance. Go soft. He starts pushing, I'm going soft. But the idea is to get him out of sun chin, okay? Half hard, half soft. When he pushes, go soft. When you feel the tension, shove him out of his sun chin, all right? Try it. Uh, both are going at the same time. Yes. 
Use the forearms to push. You can go as high as the elbow. Push him out of Sun Chin. You, you can also grab on the arms. You can grab to pull them towards you. The grab is acceptable. Half hard, half soft. When he's hard, push him. Very good. I see people moving. You're getting it. Feet cold? No, my hips. That's it. See a lot of people moving. Very good. Very good. Half hard. Half soft, yield when it's time. And relax. Now, for a workout. Right, Sunshine? All hard. Whatever he does, I'll opposite it. Very strong. Whatever he does, or whatever I do, he will do the opposite very strong. Try it. Hold Sun Chin. Whatever strength he produces, I will produce the opposite movement with strength too. Whatever angle he pushes at, I will produce the opposite angle with strength. Lock down. Sanchin, don't lean. Grab the floor with your toes. He is not fighting your arms, he is fighting your Sanchin. He is not fighting your arms, he is fighting your son chin. Roll up your sleeves. Roll up your sleeves. Right son chin, katika tie on the grab. Katika tie, first phase. One, two, I want you to lock your wrists in and feel the pull here. He is not fighting your arm, he is fighting your son chin. So when you lock down, where is this technique here? Where is that used as a block? I want you to feel the pull and fight a son chin grab. Where is that? Where's the block? Where do you use that for a block? Throw a front kick. Right? Right there. Okay? Let's try it. Katika Tai, massive pull, both ears at the same time. Feel it in your San Chin and push up and do it again. Do about 10 each arm. Switch. Try it. <clears throat> People, when you're... Um, the other side of my life, I was um, a captain at the uh, Plymouth County Sheriff's Department. And I had in my lifetime, four people stand up in the middle of the class and said, well, Mr. Bethany, Captain Bethany showed me, saved my life. That is the ultimate. Had a student came back from Afghanistan, sat in my office and said, Sensei, I just want to tell you that what you showed me saved my life in Afghanistan. The back of my hair stands up every time I say it. But believe it or not, the back of your hair, when it stands up, it's nature's way of telling you something's wrong. When the back of your hair stands up, it's nature's way of telling you something's wrong. Happens to a tiger, a cat. There are three animals. One of them is a tiger. You see the back of his mange come up. I'm going to tell you something. 
nurture that mind, body, and spirit. The body's easy. When you get into the mind, that's where it gets really complicated, but you have to stay on it. You see, we did a slow sanjin kata to live in the moment. When you get a thought, some people call it a deja vu, or something like that, stop and let it stay or stay on it longer. Don't just let it pass. It's nature's way of telling you something is going to happen. It's nature's way of telling you you have a perception that you have to nurture by staying on it, just like you stay on a movement, to understand what it's trying to tell you. Like, there's a guy in that car with a gun. <sighs> Here went up, moving into a car. Guy had a warrant on him. He was flee fleeing felon, and he was known to have a firearm. I started to walk up to where I thought he might be, Back of my hair stood up. And because of my experience, I knew something was wrong. So I walked up very slowly and drew my firearm where he couldn't see it. And I seen a glow of a cigarette that he was smoking in the car. It was him. As Soon as he seen me, he turned around and said, get away from the car, because I started to act like I was drunk. And I, excuse me, I said, no, man, I, I just got to take a pee right here. I, get out of here. Get away from me. Hey, you got a cigarette, man? You got a cig cigarette? He said, no. I said, get out of here. Get out of here. And then, get out of the car right now. Had a firearm on him. Thank God. But I'm not talking about a movement. I'm talking about an awareness that martial arts gives you to tell you. It's nature's way of telling you something's wrong. Things like that. It's not so much I blocked or I did this, or I did that. It's an awareness that most of them had. Some of them were techniques. But it's a tremendous feeling to have, you know, you people, like I said, teachers teach somebody for one year. You have them for 45, 50 years. It's not just a kick and a punch, all right? Give me a left sun chin. Okay, we're going down into the host stance of the Kanchiwakata people, the grabbing motion is more effective than the pushing motion. If you, if you come up to a car and there's electrical wires on it, don't grab the door because instinctively, right? What happens when you touch a hot stove? It doesn't do this. This is more instinctive. This is more powerful, okay? So I want you to understand that when you're going down to the hot stance, I'm gonna give you the command to go down on the hush stance and then I'm gonna clap. When I clap, you wanna be right there, three times. One timing, two timing, three timing, all same time. Rip. You know those guys used to rip those telephone books? A telephone book is a book that has all the telephones in it <laughs> and it's about this thick. A telephone booth is what we used to go in, two guys, and when one guy come out, he passed the Don test. Telephone booth is a little room with a telephone on it. I tell it to the children, the only ones that are laughing are the mothers and fathers that are sitting back there. So, ripping motion, wokey, ripping motion. Ready? it? Again. Freeze. No, okay, I'll do a freeze again. Stay there this time, ready? Okay, so now hips are supposed to be flush. I don't want to see your elbow and your hand is in crane or sun chin. A lot of times we get this or a turning sideways, right there. This is like a shrieking coming out. The throwing stars, you can't see it coming at you. You can see it coming at you this way. That's what makes those throwing stars so dangerous. They, it's like a frisbee, you can't see it coming at you. And your strike is supposed to be the same way. Just like that. Keep it in tight. Let's try it again. Face front. When you go down into your horse stance, do not go down this way. That is not the way you go down on the horse stance. When a tire starts to run fast, does he do this? Or does he do this? <clears throat> as he digs the floor out. Your hot stance is the same way. Watch. 
It's not. It's. Focus. Let's try it. Ready? Oh, yeah. So look at that. Even the timing of the whole class was right on the money. It's the grabbing motion that gains control of your body. It's the grabbing motion that has more power to control the body in the time. Three movements. One more time. Do it again. Ready? Yeah! Nice. Stop. I like it. Back of my head standing up again. Is somebody going to hit me? <laughs> Very good. So the grab is more important, it's more effective, it's more natural to be doing a grab. And that movement that we're talking about, ripping a, a telephone book or something thick, or that ripping motion, is the same way that you do when you do your own. Say some bonkai, you put your hands on the, on the shinai, and then you wring the towel so that when you strike down, it doesn't do this. If you grab it and you wring the towel when you grab it and you strike down this wrist strength and wringing the towel using your grab. Anybody play golf? Raise your hand. Wrist action, eh? And that's why you guys are so good at it because you've got tremendous amount of wrist strength. Anytime that you become, you know, I don't teach people that they walk into school and they want to learn the nunchaku or the uh, tumfa or something like that. First, you got to learn your hand. Then you got to develop the grip and the forearm. Then anything, anything that you put in your hand, golf, bat, whatever, becomes an extension of your arm. That's what a weapon is. It's just an extension of your arm. Sure, you got to learn the specific movements of it, but after that, it's just an extension of your arm. So you can't teach it right away to a student that doesn't know his arm and doesn't have the forearms and the grip, okay? Now, the wonky block like George was talking about is a template, okay? It's a full range block. Because you are always in this area of your body, everything that you do is around you. You can get to that spot real quick, like somebody throwing a baseball, boom. Like, somebody coming out of this region here as a threat. You know that spot, you know why? Because you've been there before. In all your movements, you've been all around you and the force field that you have, and you can see your force field at dusk, just before dusk with the sun on your back, you can see a haze around a person. You used to see it all the time in church when the priest is on a pulpit. That's your force field. And the more that you are, and the better that you're at it, that haze around you grows. Just like as you develop in martial arts, there's a haze around you that grows. That's your force field. Anything comes into that force field, it triggers it. The attitude of the individual coming into that force field is also recognized, whether it's a threat or it's not a threat. And because you've been there, you can get to that spot right away to either attack, defend, or whatever. So pieces of the Wokey block are more effective under stress than um, the whole block. It's like a template. You use it, like George was talking about. The technique starts this way. People say, you know karate? Yep. Is it defensive? Yep. A lot of blocks? Yep. Yeah, but I'm not blocking, I'm attacking. When, when I block, it's give me that hand. It's not this. It's definitely not this. Oh, geez. Give me that hand. Just like that. I'm going after it. So my block looks like this. Going after it. A lot of times you ever see a student when they're working out, they do this. That's not right. That's not right. Here. Give me that technique. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to get us, Jimmy. We're going to get ourselves in a hoss stance. Okay, I'm going to put my hand up, just like this. Jimmy's going to throw a right or a left punch. I'm going to take a portion of the Welky block, just a piece of it, because I know he's going to be punching right here. 
That's the part of the net that I have that I know I have to protect and I'm going to go to it as fast as possible. I'm going to live in that little spot there instead of the whole Waoki block. So I'm going to use a wrist block. So if he throws a punch, I'm going to use a wrist block. If it's, punch. If it's on the outside, I want you to grab. If it's on the inside, I want you to throw a back fist. Okay, let's try it. Small part of it. If you catch the outside of the arm, grab it. If you catch the inside of the arm, back fist to the face. Okay, relax. Stay right there and watch this here. Now we're going to use the end of the Woki block. So as he punches, use the end of the Woki block and don't pull. 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 This is good. Pull him into the technique, right? Like Kumite one. You know, you, you just want to be careful, but you want to pull. Where the Woki block is, is really more effective is to push down. The downward motion has more effect on his, uh, on his assumption kata than the forward motion because he can pick it up a little bit. But the downward motion breaks his stance. And anytime you can break his stance, his ability to recuperate is going to be a lot longer. And the ability to me, while he's recuperating, to hit him is going to be a lot easier. So do your wokey blocks, but instead of pulling, pull down. See how that feels. Because it's there, right? It's there. Go ahead. You'll pull him right into you. Just be careful you don't get a headbutt. People, when you, start, when you start your block, it starts here. That's part of the Woki, eh? That's where I want you to bring his hand. Right there. You have that strength. So bring it back to be the beginning of the Woki, okay? Where you've been many times. There it is. Be careful. You will hurt their shoulder. Sections of the Woki block. Start your Woki. I want it there. Now pull down from that spot. Pull. That's it. There you go. And relax. Some of the assets of the Wage You Do system, I call them the four aces. Not the four asses, the four aces. You're not supposed to say that in a dojo. The four aces. First ace is the conditioning. Nobody does the conditioning like we do. And you have to be careful to make sure that you condition and you don't bruise your partner so they can continue their conditioning. All right? It's not to show how strong you are. And people do that all the time. It's over Okinawa. And these guys, you know, they pride themselves on, you know, I'm going to condition, I'm going to break his arm. What the hell is that? You think I'm stupid? So I started hitting pressure points. All of a sudden, they didn't want to hit me anymore. You know, this one here. Do you know what that is? Radio Large intestine 10. Radio. Large intestine 10. Large intestine 10. <laughs> Don't worry, gato. <laughs> So I was over there, and I'm not going to mention any names, but, you know, he likes to condition. So he starts doing the conditioning, and he's smacking the hell out of me. And I'm saying, is this, I'm, I'm standing here, I'm going to do my conditioning, but why do Wiju people think that if I can hit you real hard and hurt you in conditioning, I'm standing there letting you do it. Uh, you, know, you don't have as much conditioning as I do. So what you do is when, he, when you punch, the block come around, and you fire right there. Right there, you know, and boom, and hit it down. And people, when you do the, when you do the conditioning exercise, um, stand on this side so they can see it, hold the punch out. This, this, this is what he's doing. One, two, 
the hell is he doing? You're going to spy like that? I'm going to kick, I'm going to hit you with a shooto. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is it. <clears throat> That's what you hit with. It's a reflection of the opposite. It's not this. <sighs> Ray Charles could see that coming. Right? Not anymore. <laughs> right here. You want to pride yourself on <clears throat> this. Right there. That's what you do. And if you see him wincing, then lighten up. That's a read too. When you're telegraphing, you read people coming in. You're also supposed to read and be sensitive to the fact that you're hitting him too hard. Knock it off. He wants to be conditioned. He doesn't want to be beat up. Now, you want to beat me up? Okay, sparring. Okay, <laughs> I'm not just standing there. You want to test your ability? Then test it when you're sparring, which he did. And he, <laughs> we picked him up two or three times, you know? But this is very important that you read the intensity of how much you are hitting somebody and back off a little bit. They're conditioning. Everybody has their limit and they want to be conditioned. And try not to hit at the same spot. You don't, you don't hit the same spot. You don't hit the wrist and you don't hit the elbow. But you do, whoa, I'm sorry. But you do hit right here that you can which will affect him and drop him down. This, is, this was a great technique. Guys on the bars, and, <laughs> hold on to, to the bar, like you hold on to the bars. Guys in the gym, and the kid's trying to take his hand, get up, get up, get up, get up. So I walked up and I went like this. Put him in back and, what the heck was that? <laughs> Little pressure point, and the, and the inmate got really mad because he thought he was, you know, the king, the king of the cells, and he's holding on, and we're not gonna get him in handcuffs. Just hold on to the wrist, give him a little tap, and back he goes. And don't you think that's humiliating? Also, you get to this point here, and he's not going, he's not going, he's not going. Well, I, down he you. goes, <laughs> all the way to, Do you have a pen? I'm okay, don't worry. <laughs> but down he goes, and, and it doesn't... Am I bleeding? <laughs> what do you have a bad back on? I'm good, don't worry. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Just a little tap. Now that, I hit the other leg. <laughs> it's a little, the little peroneal, the little peroneal tap, it works better. Doesn't it work better when it's coming up than it does coming down? The angle direction is very important. The angle of the dangle. The angle of that. So what I want you to do to learn that, because it's a very effective technique, and the technique when you're sparring, I'm not going to hit you, I'm sorry. I promise. I promise. <laughs> this, the shin coming up just beside that peroneal. Now you want to find out where the peroneal is, the best way to do it is to just stand here, have him bend his knee, and just give him a tap above the knee. <laughs> I want you all to try that on both sides so you feel it. He should do this. Just like this. <laughs> Go ahead, try it. Find the peroneal. Gallbladder 31. That's the gallbladder 31. 31, 32, and 33. God bless him. Okay, when I was over in Okinawa, um, I'm getting ready to fight in a tournament, and, <laughs> and I won't tell you whose, whose dojo I was at, and he comes up and says, Bethany-san, kumite? And I look around the room, and, you know, okay, yeah. All of a sudden, in the back room, here comes three guys, they look like Coke machines. They're like, Just like that, I go, son of a gun, I was set up. And one of them caught me in a spot where gallbladder 37 above the ankle inside. 31? 31. Inside, above the ankle. Thing blew up like a balloon. I got a hematoma. Sensei Rabish is rubbing it down with ice and everything because I got to fight in a tournament. And that's where they go for it. All right? When you're conditioning somebody and you're using your conditioning, you hit with this right here. This. Not the shin. The shin is the weapon. The instep above it is the conditioning part. So if you want to hurt somebody in conditioning, just rise your shin into it. Of course, some of the guys that we were, we were doing uh, katika tai with, uh, you know, they'd use their shin. That's, that's not conditioning me. You're trying to hurt me. So what do you do? You return the favor with a shin right where I told you. And you can tell it hurts because they go, and then they change, because they're running the class, you know, so you gotta change when they wanna change, but, you know. So it, um, 
the movement on the inside is a very good technique. Plus, it's easy to get at, especially if they got a stance like this. You can get on the inside real quick without exposing your face. So what I want to do now is an exercise that we like to do. We like to do katikatai in a sparring level, all right? So instead of doing the static katikatai, Jimmy and I will do katikatai back and forth on the front leg at first. And every once in a while, I'll do that to make sure that he's in a position using his leg distance and not exposing his face. And make sure they keep, how many people you see do katikatai, they're down like this. You can find that leg, you know where it is. You don't have to look at it, because if you look at it, you're leaving yourself exposed and you're premeditating, I'm going at your legs. Okay, but you watch this, okay? I'm going, freeze, look it. Now I can, I can apply, it's at the corner. I can apply the shin because I have the range. So when you're moving back and forth, especially picking up the corners, when somebody fights, sometimes they'll take the corners out. They'll take the sides out before they go down the middle. They won't go right down the middle in the beginning. They'll bust you up on the side before they chance going right down the chute. It says that Musashi, when he, they try to depict the seven attacks that he had, the person that was in front of him, the first person he took out was the guy here, because when he drew his sword, that was the hardest one to get. And after he defeated and maimed and struck all of them, the guy in front is said that he killed them because if he was bold enough to stand in front of me, then he thought he was good enough to take me out, all the rest of them. And, you know, animals use that all the time. You ever see when you got chickens or roosters or something and you're playing around, and as soon as you turn around, whoa, they come right at you? That's nature's way, you know? It's easier. His back's to me and everything like that. That's okay. We can use that too. Don't feel ashamed because, you know, you, in kumites or something, you kind of elude the person and get his back to you while you attack. Uh, animals do that all the time. Of course, you don't want to make it feel like you're um, a coward and, and have to sneak up behind them. But, you know, the corners are where you're going to look at. So as I'm moving back and forth and he's striking, I'm trying to get freeze it. You see where my foot is now? He doesn't realize it because this looks the same. But look how much I can uncoil so I can get that, that gun out there with the shin into his leg. Check it on the, try to keep upright, keep looking at him, and then sneakily he doesn't realize, uh-oh, you're in a bad place now. You don't realize it, but I'm in shin range, where I usually am in for katikatai uh, development of the, the leg range. Try that. Katikatai. Back and forth. Be nice. And you can hit to the capacity of katikatai. Hit to the capacity that you would katikatai. Do not use your shin. Just make sure you can put it in there. Hit to the capacity of katikatai. This is the way a Weijidu fighter fights. Frequently attacks the legs. If you do not attack the legs, you are not a wagey fighter. If you do not attack the legs frequently, you are not a wagey fighter. Relax. That's a nice way of doing katika tai. You bring it as close as possible to reality to sparring. You bring it as close as possible to sparring reality. If you do not attack the legs frequently, you're not a way to do fighter. I fought some of the best people known in the world. Professional PKA, guys that are not around anymore. And you know what they said to me after I sparred? Because it was over when I did the first one. You, excuse my language, you Ouija guys and you effing kicks to the legs, don't do that anymore. Don't do that. You can kick me in the head, but I can't kick you in the leg. Go to a Taekwondo tournament, guess what? They can kick you in the head, but you can't kick the legs. That's their rules. Why? You got your own opinion, I got. Somebody faces you like this, I'm drooling. What the hell, he's giving it to me? Uh, I'm looking at it like, is this a trick? 
does he? And then finally I realized that was a stupid move. Boom, match is over. Some of the finest world champions that I fought, when I applied the um, kick to the leg, that's exactly what they said. And the match stopped right away. Can't do that. I can't do that. You can try to kick me in the face, but I can't kick your leg. I can't do that. That's okay. No problem. That's what you do. So if you come as close as possible in your training, like take a tie, and you can hit a little bit harder, but make sure you use the instep. Every once in a while when you close the distance on the corner, tap them with your shin just to surprise you that you're in that range. One shot with your conditioned shin against somebody that's not conditioned, you, you, can, tell, you can tell it worked. <laughs> they changed their stance. But then nature has it. They'll put it right back out there, hit it again. <laughs> and that's it. They won't want to fight anymore. Because most people, unlike Wade Chidu, we fight from both ways. We go both ways. We fight this way, and we fight this way, and you're constantly changing. Okay, to work on the half hard and the half soft and the cornering of your stance, we're gonna do a back fist. The another ace of the Wade Chidu system, the signature movement of the Wade Chidu. I can't tell you how many boxes I put down with a back fist. Guy come up to me and goes, I'm golden gloves. I said, I don't care what color your mittens are. And he puts his hands up, drove it straight down the pike. And you know when you knock him out, when he falls, his face drops like that. He, he gets sweat and stuff knocked on you and right down. You know why? Because he's used to stuff like this and not this. Boom, straight down the pike. So we're gonna go back and forth, see the way you do the back fist. Now don't throw it this way because he doesn't even have to move. You have to thread it. And if he's like this, hit the back of the hand, which will break the hand, the metatops, metacopos, and shove it into his face. But it comes up this way, thread it. So we're gonna go back and forth, and make sure you know who's going for it. Okay, on the back fist, following technique. Go ahead. Now I want you to block it, okay? You mean I do this all the time, but I'm going to show you what you're going to do that I don't want you to do. Here it comes. Again, this is what you're going to do. Here it comes. You see the foot? This is what you're going to do. You're going to go like this. And then when you lean on this side, you're going to lunge in. He'll block it all the time. Change it up like on the corners. Watch when I throw my back fist. See, it's in an off step, in an off beat. And it comes straight at him. You notice he didn't have a prayer in the world to try to get that off. Because I'm not telegraphing it with my stance. So it's not this. One, two, three. I shouldn't have told you that. I shouldn't have told you that the second time, and then you'd be successful at getting it in more. But watch his stance, because he'll do this. And then here it comes. Okay? Get it on an off beat while you're moving on the con, and then you'll get it in. Back and forth, back this. Make sure you know who's going first. You don't want to marry you. Block it. <laughs> That'll hurt. Watch his stance. If he's blocking it, your stance is telegraphing it. If he's blocking it, your stance is telegraphing it. Straight in. She said nuts on that. Is it still there? <laughs> Relax. You know, when I walk around the room and I see a smile, I say, well, it's working. They got it. Because you can see in and out, and he didn't, he, this is all you're doing. 
And you can't even touch it because he's not telegraphing it with his stance. Any um, hot stance? Punch it to a, a right punch whenever you're ready. Tomorrow, I will show you how to read it so well that you will grab it before he makes it. All right? Piece of the wokey, eh? I know where that part of my aura is, and I can sense, and a couple times, this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna do this, and then you're gonna ask him, were you just gonna throw that? And they'll say, yeah, now it's working. You may catch it on the way out, but the times that you go like this, and it very, probably didn't even move a skosh, then ask him, were you just gonna throw that? And he'll smile and say, you got me. We're gonna do it with both hands. Shot. I want you to read the seed. I want you to know that sometimes when, <laughs> poor Grace, she's always catching heck with this one. Grace is a great fighter. And when Grace and I fight, I have to fight on her terms. And it's getting to the point where I don't want to fight on her terms anymore because I can't use my weight against her. I have to fight her on her terms, which is the technique. If I use force or the power that I have, that's not fair, okay? And I put myself in a cat stance and she, she fights whatever, happened. and then after about, I told her, I'm sorry, it's not fair. After about maybe, I don't know, a minute, Grace doesn't want to come in anymore because I know when she's coming in and I just stick her with a front kick. And then after a while, she just, and I apologize for being so advanced in reading the seed. But that happens frequently, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Oh, yep. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to Live Dandy.